we'll wait for some more time maybe one or two more minutes and if there isn't any people then we will probably end the stream but if somebody joins and if they have questions then uh yeah we will take all those questions Hello mate, how are you? And if I'm audible, uh, please let me know in the chat. Hello Sanskriti. Am I audible? good so yeah, if you have any question please let me know in the chat and in past few streams a lot of people have asked about uh, sample sop so i have downloaded or I have uploaded the SOP to my drive. So let me share the link or just remind me once we are in the middle of stream when we have more people, because if I just put it now, most people not going to go back <coughs> and uh, see for that. So yeah, just remind me once we are like 20, 30 minutes in. So I will post the link then. Thanks Rupa, thanks for letting me know. When you study in UK, is it easy to look for a job in US? Mm. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> uh, the simple answer is no, it's not. Uh, and it is actually similar if you are looking for a job even from India. So the kind of complexity, it is going to be same. So that's the, but the thing is, if you are coming to UK, you are doing a master's. In that case, you will have a master's degree. So definitely you will have an extra qualification as compared to people uh, who haven't done master's. So that can probably give you a little edge over the people. But uh, saying that it would be easy. No, it, it is not going to be easy. If your ultimate goal is to live and settle in US, I think you should pursue your masters from US. That would be much more sensible, but I know it is quite expensive to do that. But uh, yeah, if, if your preferred location is US, I think it would make much more sense to do your masters from US. Hi, I have offers from King's College London and University of Edinburgh for MSc Data Science. Which one would be better? If I had to pick one, I would go for University of Edinburgh over King's College London. Uh, it's simply because for computer science courses or related uh, courses, University of Edinburgh is ranked uh, much better in 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 world and uh, by ranking what i mean is they have better reputation as compared to other universities but if you have something very specific which you like about king's college london then definitely you can go for that as well because again it's a very reputed university and uh, uh, the course content is also uh, good uh, so yeah it's it's totally up to you if you want to live in 
London on Edinburgh so which one you would prefer but uh, for me yeah if I had to pick one I would always go for University of Edinburgh Hello Varani, MSA Business Analytics in Brickbeck versus Hertfordshire versus University of West London, which one to choose, please suggest the order of your preference. Hmm. I don't know much about Brickbeck, so I will probably keep it at last. Uh, I have I had good uh, impressions about University of uh, Hertfordshire but recently I've got to know that they have like 500 students in one batch so it was for data science so I would assume it would be sort of similar for business analytics if they're getting a lot of attraction for that particular course so they probably won't limit the number of students so that is something which I don't really uh, like but if they are managing those many number of students properly and if there isn't any issues in terms of course delivery and uh, the kind of content they are providing to everyone and the quality of content so in that case I think University of Hertfordshire should be the topic for me still um, so yeah that's there but uh, when I talk to some of the people they had positive impressions regarding uh, regarding the course delivery and course content from University of Hertfordshire so if I have to pick I would probably still go for uh, University of Hertfordshire and then it would be University of uh, West London and at last I would pick I would put a uh, uh, brick back so that would be my priority list but yeah I mentioned the number of students in one batch in Hertfordshire University just to let you know uh, <clears throat> and to make you aware so one thing that you can do is you can reach out to people from all these universities you can ask them how's the course content uh, how faculties are teaching and uh, any other query which you have because they will be able to tell you in a much better way and they will be able to give you very concrete information so yeah that's what I would suggest. So far today we have lot less people and uh, less number of questions as well so yeah so in the meantime probably you can tell me how's your weekend going mine's been busy but what about at your end and uh, I know a lot of you are planning for higher studies how's your planning going and uh, have you already taken your IELTS exam and things like that? How hard it's to start data science from a non-coding background? Uh, I think the hardest part is to learn programming. Yes, I agree because if you are if you have no idea about coding, then it will take some time 
to get hold over it. Uh, but if you have good logical thinking and uh, logic building and things like that, it's just a matter of time how quickly you can pick up the syntax. And uh, picking up Python programming syntax is not that hard. It is considered to be one of the easiest programming languages. So in my opinion, if you dedicate uh, time and effort properly within like a month or so you will be able to learn python programming and also for data science you don't really have to go into uh, very complex concepts of python programming uh, if you know basic uh, basic syntax and uh, basic data structures of uh, python like uh, list tuple dictionary sets uh, things like that i think you should be fine because most of the times you are going to use data frames from pandas or polars uh, and uh, for mathematical operation you will be using numpy or numpy arrays for machine learning part you will be doing sk you will be using sklearn so you will be using a lot of uh, packages which are uh, built in python so yeah you don't really have to worry too much about programming but yes when you start to gain some experience when you start to become uh, much more familiar with data science concepts and when you start to move towards deployment part that's when the complex thing comes in i would say uh, like uh, object oriented programming and uh, data structures because that's when you start to uh, code things in a way that it is much more scalable but when you are learning or just getting started with data science and you are in the research phase i think you everything that you are going to do will be in your ipython notebooks so yeah that's there and one thing i always suggest people is that if they want to learn data science and if they really have no idea about coding and stuff and they are planning to uh, invest some money in any kind of course always suggest them to first learn python from open source platforms like youtube and uh, once they feel comfortable with programming language then they can probably invest some money in courses uh, it's not like courses don't teach python programming or any other programming language they do but uh, they just go over that thing very fast and uh, you need some time to grasp those concepts and get hold over programming so that's why i always suggest to learn python from open source uh, platforms and uh, there are a lot of tutorials available on youtube uh, for python so why spend uh, money and also by learning python you will know that what to expect and uh, will you be comfortable in programming because if you feel like after learning python for like let's say a month or so you feel like no you're not going anywhere and you don't really like it uh, in that case i think it's not worth jumping into data science world but yeah if you end up liking it and uh, yeah if you enjoy it uh, then definitely you can get into some course and you can invest some money Um, bro, can you elaborate business analytics course versus I suppose you're asking MS data science what is the best website for best data science jobs okay so I'll take this question later but yeah I'll tell you the difference I think I have a video about this if not I will first check if I have a video because if I have already made a video on this then it would be much more easy for you to just go through that video and uh, understand it in a much better way so yes i do have a video i will share the link in the chat
what's the best website for best data science job so there is nothing like best data science job but um, if you want to find jobs in data science i think linkedin is the most popular option nowadays most of the companies they do prefer to post their openings on linkedin so you certainly can find something there if we talk about uk job market then there are some others like uh, read indeed is there in india as well so that is there so read r double e d total jobs target jobs uh, cv library so these are some of the websites which i can name uh, but then there are like lots and lots of other platforms as well but these are some of the popular ones how and where to find part time jobs in it field data science while doing your msc data science are there enough such jobs so finding a part time job yes it is possible but i think there will be much more internships available as compared to part time jobs so that's there and uh, i have discussed about quite a lot in almost all the live streams like how you can find there are few things which you can do you can always apply uh, on various different online portals the other thing that you can do is go to meetups to find meetups in your locality you can find it on meetup.com and uh, then apart from that you can participate in various hackathons lot of various universities and uh, third party organizations they do conduct lot of um, uh, lot of hackathons so participating in hackathon can also land you an internship or something like that so yes uh, that is totally possible and uh, for part time job yes they are available but it's just hard to find and they are very less in number where is the next question yeah is university of lancaster good for business analytics mm, so i don't really remember the course content so it's hard for me to say anything uh, what i can do is i can probably look into the course content after the live stream so uh, put this same question in the comments so i will reply it uh there once the live stream is over the companies which give part time jobs in technical field are fine with us working only 20 hours per week or they demand more no they are totally fine uh they're totally fine with 20 hours per week because even they know the regulations and uh, they don't want to do something like that so yeah they are okay with that scope of uh, msc fintech courses um, i don't know what things they are covering in fintech course so i can't really tell from courses perspective but i can talk from the domain perspective like the financial uh, sector so there is a huge there's a huge investment in technical aspect of any finance uh, finance business be it bank be it uh, uh, insurance companies and uh, it can be anything like the financial institution or something like that so they are all trying to invest heavily in uh, these things because banks which require you to come physically to the branch they are being less preferred by people because there are a lot of banks uh, they are providing all the facilities at your uh, doorstep so you don't really have to go out you can do everything on your phone so certainly those banks are doing good and by seeing that 
most of the banks are trying to switch to those kind of things so certainly there is a huge demand in this uh, in this field and a uh, lot of companies are investing heavily in the tech department so i see good scope in that but again it depends on what a particular course is covering so that is something which needs to be looked into university of bath or university of liverpool data science mse um, if i had to pick i would probably pick um, it's a tough one actually because the course content of both the universities are really good but yeah i can probably pick um, bath over liverpool simply because they have slightly better uh, course content as compared to liverpool having said that even if you take liverpool uh, the kind of course content they are providing it's 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 good enough and they are covering all the topics that you need to be a data scientist so yeah uh, it's that but my personal preference would be university of bath but i think it's on an expensive side so that is there is python everything for msc data science or there are other tools like wsql so a lot of different universities cover a lot of different things uh, some universities do cover sql most of the universities don't <sighs> um if there is a database management or something like that uh, module in a course they are most likely going to use sql there so that is something you can look into but a uh, lot of universities they do cover uh, python r and some dashboarding tool like tableau or power bi power bi seems to be the popular choice so that is there so yeah they these are the tools that most of the universities are covering as part of the masters course msc data science one year or two year which is more recommendable for me one year course makes more sense is simply because i had some background in data science i had learned quite a lot of things beforehand so spending two years in a course where i know quite a lot of things wouldn't make much sense so that's why i went for one year course but if you are someone who is very new to uh, data science i think you would need more time to adjust to the curriculum to learn things and if there is some concept which is taking some time for you to uh, understand in that case i think two year course would make more sense so that is there but if you are asking about one year uh, course in the uk versus two year course in the uk so the two year course in the uk is something like the first year will be your masters and the second year will be your placement year so for that the question is different uh, if you have some experience in that case you don't need placement year but if you don't have any experience it's better to have placement here as a buffer uh, what is the starting salary for business analyst data science graduate are there jobs available yes jobs are available but it's the job market is highly competitive so that makes it hard to find a job and there are a lot of uh, my friends they are freshers and some experienced ones uh, there is one batchmate she had experience in sap so technical stuff yeah but uh, she is still uh, finding it hard to find a job she is, she has applied for more than 200 to 300 jobs i guess uh, but still she hasn't been able to find something and same is the case for few other people um so yeah they're still trying to find job and uh, when you go on linkedin if you open something uh, some job uh, job posting and when you see how many people have applied usually there are like over 200 people who have applied for a particular role so that is there
so the competition is really high but if you think uh, if you think you can fight that competition then yes certainly there are jobs about starting salary again i have a video about this uh, i will post that link in the chat I think I have posted that link already, but yeah, I'll post it again. It's fine. Queen's University Belfast for data analytics. It is certainly a very good university for data analytics course. Their course content is amazing and also considering it's a it's a SL group university, their fees is also not that high. So I had applied for only one data analytics course when I was looking for masters and it was in Queen's University Belfast. So yeah. I finalized Bath for MSc Data Science over uh, Sheffield, Lexeter, Durham, Glasgow, purely based on course content. What would you choose if you had these options? Um, yeah, that would be the same case for me as well. If I had to pick between these universities, I would also pick Bath. So, in my opinion, it's a it's a good it's a good choice. Which tools are taught in MSc Data Science in Newcastle? So in Newcastle, they will start with uh, R, mainly for statistics and uh, data analysis. And then when you will move on to machine learning and deep learning, you will be using Python. Uh, apart from that, you will be using Power BI for data visualization. And uh, they're also covering Git and uh, shell commands i won't say shell scripting because it was very basic so some some of the shell commands so they are covering those tools mm, yeah those are the main tools that uh, they are covering here cloud computing scope and a job in UK, is it worth to enter as a fresher in that? As a fresher, I, I don't suggest people to go for master, especially in conditions like these where, where bigger banks are uh, collapsing and uh, all, the, all the major countries have major economic issues job market is just just not good all the bigger companies have laid off quite a lot of people so i mean if you just think about it there was someone who was working in meta let's say they got laid off now on their resume they have this experience in meta and they are applying for jobs and then there is another candidate uh, who have just finished their bachelor's and then they came for masters they finished their masters they don't really have any experience as a recruiter, whose resume would you pick? Who would you call for interview? Just think about it. If I was a uh, if I was a recruiter, I would probably go for someone who is coming from Meta. I mean, I might sound very harsh, I know, but ultimately, 
people have to people have to think about the business because even that company which is hiring they might also be very uh very cost conscious they want to put their money into someone who has some experience or something so that's why i always suggest to gain some experience and then come for masters but if you really think that uh you want to do your masters right after your bachelors yes definitely you can do that it's totally up to you it's your decision and you know uh much better about your condition than i do so yes certainly you can do that there is there is nothing wrong in that about scope in cloud computing yes there are a lot of jobs and you might have already known that uh, all the companies now they just want to use cloud platforms like aws gcp or azure something like that so having that skill under your belt is certainly going to help in a longer run as well because nowadays not many companies they want to set up their own uh, huge uh, data warehouses and stuff they can just rent something uh, from amazon or from google or from microsoft in form of uh, aws gcp or azure so yes definitely it has it has good scope hi roshan how are you are you currently in your psw visa or employer sponsored visa if you are i'm um, just a second no that's fine um yeah if you are in psw visa then any chance to get sponsorship visa from your current employer so i am currently on post study work visa yes and uh, yes they have told that maybe after few months or so they will start the conversation about sponsorship because it does take some time to get those things finalized so yes there is an option of getting a sponsorship from the same employer Okay, I'll share the sample. It's not actually sample SOP. It's the actual SOP that I wrote for Newcastle University. So yeah, I will put the link into the chat because a lot of people have asked this in the past, and uh, I was just trying to find it from a very long time, and I was able to find it now. I have uploaded it on. Google Drive yeah i found it I have made this link open so anyone with the link can access it but yeah just try to access it once and if you are able to access it just let me know in the chat if not then I will again change the uh permissions Hi Ashutosh uh job is good people are good uh but yeah lot of people it's it's a huge organization so lot of people lot of meetings uh, 
but uh, so far it's been going good i'm still learning a lot of new things there about how they are handling data and how it can be handled in a much better way how we can optimize the process and things like that and then there is a big project about data uh, text analysis and natural language processing things like that so yeah that is almost about to start so yeah it's going good I am a software developer want to switch into business analytics what are the tools slash tech i would require for the masters um, again the link which i have shared where i talked about a um, business analyst i have discussed about that so do check out that video but then i think i have a dedicated video about must have skills for the uh, for business analyst so i will share that link as well in the chat one very important difference is that as a software engineer you just sit in a corner and you just work on your stuff you get things done you deliver it life is easy all good as a business analyst you interact with quite a lot of people so that is a part of your job and uh, that's where you need to be really good with your uh, communication skills so that is something which is very important as a business analyst and something uh, need to consider is because when coming from software developer side yes i don't get me wrong as a software developer also you interact quite a lot with a lot of different people but it's not like but most of the time you will be interacting with your teammates and things like that but as a business analyst you interact with a lot of stakeholders and they are not very technically sound uh, so that is the hardest part so yeah that is something which you need to consider but yeah you can watch this uh, video about must have skills for business analyst and you should be able to get some idea about this have you selected projects um selected projects on what I did not get your question asked those I mean if you can just elaborate it a bit that would help Today I have few one-to-one -one sessions with some of the members of the channel. So yeah, I need to do that. Also, I think it will start from two thirty, I guess. So yeah, there are few calls. So I need to look into their questions and prepare for that. So yeah, I need to do that as well now. In job, um. It's not like I have to choose one now because when they posted their job description, yes, they had something in mind. But now that I have joined, now they are planning for something else. So uh, I don't really have to choose one project. Actually, I have to work on a lot of different projects. So so that is there. Uh, mm, yeah it's it, the main big project i think is the text analysis and natural language processing so that is there uh, apart from that i have a lot of things where we are getting the core it team 
so we have to talk to them and to get things built so the, like mainly about managing the data and getting the data into a central database so things like that so that is there uh, that is also something that i have to do and then there are some uh, process related stuff which i can probably automate which will save some time for other team members so that is there so there are a lot of things which i am working on i will be working on so yeah i think you have slow mode on uh yeah maybe the thing is when i schedule these uh, live sessions on my tab the ui is very different uh, and uh, you have to like go into multiple settings to turn on or off something i will probably check next time uh, it could be possible yeah also there could be lag because from past few days the internet is not being very kind to me it just sometimes just stops working in between and then reconnects and the speeds are also not really that good so that's there Um, I just want uh, your opinion. So I have this concept in my mind where I usually get a lot of questions from people saying that they want to work on certain project and uh, things like that, but we are not able to understand which type of projects to work on. So I have been thinking for a while now that I could probably pick a project and uh, I could also select few people uh, from our community and uh, I will let you guys work on the particular problem if you have anything that you want to ask I will be there to help that way I think you will be able to follow a lot of best practices um, and also you will learn how to collaborate between other team members and stuff like that so I have this concept in mind but I still need to figure out the details about it like which platforms to use how to organize it and how to make it much more useful so yeah uh, I just have that thing in mind and uh, but yeah I still don't know how 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 the execution will be so i just want your opinion so what do you think about it? do you think it will be beneficial for you or any other uh, member from our community so do let me know in the chat if you have any idea about it could you mention popular jobs site in whole european region like we have Nokri? so i don't know about whole european region but Yes, Indeed and LinkedIn are everywhere. You can also find jobs on Workday. Workday, yeah. So there is this platform called Work, Workday. So there, you, there also you can look for jobs and it's again uh, quite a popular one. Um, there is another which is career something. Let me quickly do a google search if i could find or i might be having something in my email
can't really find it but yeah uh, LinkedIn Workday and Indeed they are the popular ones they are everywhere so you can find uh, jobs in European region on those platforms I know it's very generic but is MSc worth uh, worth it from UK considering the current situation so there are two different questions and I literally try to frame it again and again in all the live streams I'm gonna do the same thing again is it risky to do masters during this time in the UK yes it is very very risky is it worth doing masters in the UK or anywhere in the world again the answer is yes it's simply because you learn quite a lot not just technical stuff and things like that but personally you develop quite a lot so that's why there are a lot of companies back in India when you do masters from foreign universities they do appreciate that and they do look out for uh, such candidates and it's just the reason that you develop quite a lot you think in a very different way your perspective becomes really wide you see people from various different locations you when you learn with them you see their approach uh, and the way they think so it really helps you to think uh, very differently so uh, it is worth it but if we purely think from the perspective of return on investment it's very risky but if you are able to tackle that risk if you are able to find a job then yes it is worth financially as well so yeah that's the answer i know it's not a very straightforward answer which you might be looking for because there is no yes or no answer to this uh, but i just try to uh, frame it in a way that i'm covering all the different uh, perspective i guess so yeah that's the answer to this question We're just about to reach one hour. So if there isn't any question, then I can uh, end the live stream and I'll see you guys again next Saturday, 12 p.m. GMT. Ah, oh, these <laughs> uh, daylight saving thing. Uh, it's, it's just so annoying. I, I need to check what's the GMT time right now. Mm. so now GMP time is 1 hour uh, behind UK time I'll just say UK time you know <laughs> so yeah uh, most of you already know I do live Q&A's every Saturday 12pm uh, UK time so yeah I will end the stream now because i don't think there is any uh, there aren't any questions so mm, well now we have i was thinking to start youtube channel for useful projects related to nlp and computer vision uh, that's a good that's a good uh, step Def definitely you should do it and uh, that will help you to build a profile as well because this is something which you want to do 
as a full time job as well. And when you do projects, you explain things, you teach people, even you learn a lot of things. So it also shows a lot of different hiring managers that yes, you are serious about it and you have the skills required to get the job done. So yes, certainly you should do it. All right, guys, uh, bye and uh, see you next Saturday, 12 p.m. UK time.